Hi, in this video we are going on with optimal control for discrete time systems. In particular we are going to focus on linear systems with quadratic cost. We are going to consider finite horizon and we will regard the state at the final time fixed. That means uh, the state at the final time n will be equal to some given r n. Now, in this situation, the first order necessary conditions are given by the following set of two difference equations, each of order lowercase n, where n is the order of the system. I emphasize lowercase. And then uh, the two boundary conditions, x at the initial time and x at the final time. This is a two-point boundary value problem, and it's pretty challenging from the viewpoint of uh, solving it and one way how to actually solve it is called shooting. The idea behind shooting is essentially that you determine whatever can be determined at one end of the interval and you make a guess at the, at the rest and then you solve the system in order to see if you can hit the boundary conditions at the other end. In the linear case this is particularly simple because we can find the relationship between the values at the two ends of the interval analytically and this is given using the matrix M right here and therefore I can write down the state at the final time as a function of the state at the initial time and the lambda at the final time and for a given state at the beginning and given state at the end I can find an explicit expression for for the missing lambda uh, lambda n. Now once I get lambda at the end I can determine lambda at any point in the interval and therefore I can determine the control signal anywhere in the control interval. Uh, so far so good. Uh, the trouble however is uh, that such control is essentially open loop. It resembles what we did with receding horizon control, right? Perhaps with the only difference that here the the linear system to be solved is pretty small. It has only size lowercase n, where n is the order of the uh, dynamical system. Now let's uh, make some more investigations. In, more, in order to make it feasible, we'll assume that the Q matrix is zero, in which case we are doing so-called minimum energy control. Well, in fact, I should have inserted the R matrix, but it will not change the meaning. All right, then uh, the state equation and the co-state equations look like uh, this. And it's now obvious why I needed to have the Q matrix zero, because in that case, the co-state equation is only containing lambda terms, which I can, uh, which I can uh, now solve for lambda at K as a function of lambda at the final time. I will substitute into the state equation and what I get is this. Lambda n is still missing there. Now, uh, I can regard this whole term as, an, as a fictitious input and we know how to find the response of a state, state, mo state space model, uh, right? So we, the, the response then contains the response to the initial state, x0, and then the term that corresponds to the convolution with the external input, our fictitious input up there. So this is the general uh, solution to to the state equation, again parameterized by lambda n. And now I think it's pretty obvious where are we, where we are heading, right? If we evaluate this state equation at the end of the control horizon, this is what we get. And now note that it's actually these two guys are given, whereas lambda is the only unknown here. So we can use this equation to uh, find the solution for lambda at the end of the control horizon. In order to make the formulas uh, more compact, we will denote the whole sum here as g sub 0 and an r, and then lambda at the end of the interval can be written like this. 
Now, similarly as we did before, having a lambda at the end of the interval, we can determine lambda anywhere inside of the interval, and in particular we need to have lambda k plus 1. So let's uh, now write it down. Lambda, it's k plus 1. Looks like this. And finally, the control signal depends on lambda at k plus 1. Therefore, we can write it down as, as this. And that's essentially it. Uh, that is the, the needed expression for the optimal control. But let me now make a few comments. First, have a look at uh, the term in the round brackets. It contains the difference between the desired state and the state which would be reached without uh, control. And then uh, the, this term over here uh, contains the inverse of something labeled G sub something. So let's, uh, th this first assumes that such inverse exists. So let's now investigate under which conditions we can expect uh, the inverse to exist. And for that, we will recall an object called reachability gremian. It's defined as an infinite sum of uh, the following terms. And uh, it's known that this uh, term, this guy, must be positive definite, strictly, strictly positive, uh, if the system is reachable. Let's now restrict this definition to just a finite sum and analyze what is the relationship between, between these two in terms of the rank, in terms of uh, uh, losing the rank. For that we will invoke the famous Kelly-Hamilton theorem on matrices and what this theorem says is that if we consider a matrix of order uh, of size n times n then it, it is known that if you want to consider a power of the matrix A larger than n minus 1, then you can always express this power as a linear combination of, of lower powers of the matrix. In other words, uh, if uh, the capital N is large enough, uh, then there is no point in making it even larger, because then uh, you cannot improve the rank. And now you cannot also improve the rank or, or decay the, uh, destruct the rank by including the inverse of the matrix R, provided the matrix R is uh, non-singular. As a conclusion, we have seen that our G term in the formula for optimal control uh, is uh, invertible as long as the system is reachable.